I need to light our candle. Come on, Carmel, let's go light the candle. We have a guest today. Carmel is my sister's dog and my sister's at work. So Carmel likes to hang out and just snuggle. So that's cute. Look at her little sweater, you guys. And it has a little hood. That's cute. So we're on day five, welcome back. Please comment below if you're liking this, by the way, if you're getting any value out of this story time vlogmas, I would like to know. Um, but day five, here we are. Time to pick from the moose. Okay, Carmel, are we gonna do it? Are we gonna pick one? Yeah, what's going on? St. Thomas. So St. Thomas was part of that cruise that I was on when we talked about St. Kitts on day three. This was that same cruise. So when we docked, our friend group kind of like split up that day. They wanted to go do a different excursion and I was still pretty broke and it didn't seem worth it to me. So Denton and I decided to make that into a beach day um, where we would just be able to like lay out on the beach and have like a relaxing day. And so we took a little, I don't know if they call these chicken buses, but it's basically just a normal truck, but they've got like seats in the back. So we took this little truck and we went up, we didn't go too far. It wasn't like we went to like the other side of the island, but it was like, we went pretty far, like farther than most um, cruise ship people go. And so I just, I really like finding the beaches that aren't super packed. Like I want to actually relax and not to feel like I have to be on guard because there's all these strangers, you know? So I like to find a little bit of seclusion. So we went to a beach that was kind of, it wasn't in a resort at all, but it was like a bunch of different villas that I'm sure were rented out, like rental villas. And so... We went over there and um, we were just laying out on the beach and that was really fun. We spent a lot of time that day on the beach and we saw some iguanas. No, don't go away. and there was like coconuts. The beach that we went to, I wish I remembered the name. The sand wasn't like super, super soft. I just think that the one that we were on wasn't, since it wasn't like a touristy kind of beach, it just wasn't maintained as well. And so like from the palm trees, like the sticks and stuff, they just get mixed into the sand. So sometimes you like step on a stick and it kind of hurts, but um, that was, I mean, it's just a beach. like. What do you expect? You know, there's gonna be sticks. <laughs> and then on the way back, we walked up. So that that beach, that little truck bus thing took us to that beach. And then we decided to go farther up the hill and there was a marina and a restaurant. So we wanted to like eat at the restaurant, overlook the marina and have just like this nice relaxing lunch, dinner, brunch thing. I don't know what time of day it was, probably lunchtime. We went up there and that was delicious food. That we had a, like a seafood sampler, I think is what they called it. It had like calamari, shrimp, conch. Hmm, it had something else too. Obviously like rice and beans. That food was so good. I've decided conch isn't my favorite. It's just really rubbery and it reminds me of a big snail. I think it's just in my head, but it's just not for me. I don't, I'm not a fan. I'd rather have crab or like an actual fish. <laughs> and then after lunch, we decided to um, just kind of take our time and go back into town and like go see some of the shops. 
once we decided to leave the restaurant, we were walking down and we were just waiting at um, the stop where that bus truck dropped us off at the beach. We were just waiting for probably like 30 minutes and some guy pulls over and he's like, are you guys waiting for the bus? And we're like, yeah. He's like, they don't come this way. I'm like, uh, like they dropped us off here. And it's like, well, yeah, they'll drop you off here because you got on the bus, but they're not coming back to pick you up here. And so I didn't know it wasn't a real bus stop. I they, they Just out of the kindness of their heart, they dropped us off there. <laughs> so that guy, we hitchhiked and that guy took us back into town, which was nice because that would have been like, multiple miles to have to walk back and we would not have made it by the time we had to get back on the ship so that guy was really helpful um thank you to that strange man and then so we got back we went to some of the shops i think that was where i saw that you could mail a coconut it was like you can bring a coconut in and write on it sign it and then they'll ship it for you they had some of the funniest like souvenirs that i've seen when you first get off the boat you it's like it almost like forces you to go through the shops when you get off the cruise ship it's like they know you're gonna shop so it's like you better shop right here so we did i don't think we bought anything because like i said i've all of my travels i've been super broke you know like it is, it is what it is, but I'm just not a huge fan of shopping. Plus, like, I don't know, like, I don't pack for extra space in my suitcase to be able to bring stuff home. So it's like, intentionally, I don't buy things. But this was one of the places where it was like, ooh, there was a lot of stuff that I would have bought if I had the money and had the room to bring it home. But yeah, one of the things that you could do was to ship a coconut. And I thought that that was hilarious. I've seen like in Hawaii, you can ship a potato. I mean, I'm sure you can do that all over the world, but it's just funny. So maybe I'll do that one day. I'll ship a potato to someone and just imagine like working in the post office and you see a potato. Like, what do you do? <laughs> How weird is that? Like, I wonder what the chances are that the potato gets lost in the mail and someone just takes it and then, like, makes french fries. That probably doesn't happen very often. If I was working in the post office and I saw someone mail a potato, I would not want to eat that potato. That is the last thing that I'd be thinking about. So that's it for my trip in St. Thomas. And I know that it was super short because that that damn cruise ship it really jacks up how much time you have in a country like i i don't know it just wasn't enough time but so i'm gonna give you some facts about saint thomas saint thomas is part of the u.s virgin islands so technically that is the governing state over saint thomas it's not like saint thomas by itself it's the whole entirety of the U.S. Virgin Islands, but I like to consider it as its own thing because why not? U.S. Virgin Islands, it is down south in reference to me. Um, I don't know where you are, but it's probably either north, east, south, or west. You never really know. Yeah, everything I read says that St. Thomas is like really, really good for the beaches and the snorkeling. So I think you go to St. Thomas mostly if you want an island getaway, <laughs> you'll get it. The people in St. Thomas were super, super nice. You meet a lot of expats. I don't know, I met like three guys who were all expats on St. Thomas and considering I was only there for like 10 hours, that's a high percentage of, if you look at like the people that I met versus expats versus time on island, that was a high percentage. So I don't know if they just like appeared because it's like, oh, it's a small island. We all run into each other. I have no idea. I don't know why I met them all. One guy I met buying sunscreen and it was kind of weird that he told me that he was an expat. 
And then the second guy, it was the um, guy who we hitchhiked from. He was actually like American. He just moved down there like 20 years prior or something like that. He was talking about how he was an expat. And then there was one other person that we met, but it was a very high percentage. So I don't know if there's some kind of tax evasion deal. <laughs> Maybe I'll look into it because some, these guys know something. Um, something that I don't. That was my trip for St. Thomas. I loved it, obviously. I really liked how safe it felt. Sometimes you go down to different islands and it just doesn't feel very safe. And this one felt super safe. It might have just been where I was at. Like, I don't know if there's a dangerous part on a different side of the island. Like, I have no idea. I don't know the crime rates or anything like that. But just in my core, in my being, I felt pretty safe. Just felt like a lot of, you know, flumpy tourists. If you want to go, I definitely recommend it. Try snorkeling um, because it sounds like the waters are really awesome there for snorkeling. I did not snorkel. I just laid on the beach. That was like my beach day. When I travel, I like to do as much as possible. And so I have to like force myself to do nothing sometimes. And so my St. Thomas trip was me doing nothing. And so I had a lot of fun at the beach. I had a lot of fun at the restaurant. You know how I do. You know how I like my food and the seafood. Like it was so good. And it's obviously like freshly catched caught deadliest catch st thomas edition let me give you a little update about what's going on with me really quick <laughs> okay really quick i learned a different way on how to apply my makeup can you tell also i was constipated yesterday basically that's all um and i am gonna go now <laughs> bye <laughs>